welcome to the Velveteen Lounge Kitchen. It's always so funny to me at this point in the proceedings because I know that nobody is watching yet and yet we're live, so. You're live, you're live, and then like we're live, 10 minutes so. later, people get an Hello. alert and say, oh, I should check in. <laughs> And it's like, oh, oh, hi, let's repeat what we were doing. <laughs> if you're well, joining us now or that's life. tomorrow morning or six months or a oh, year from now. Else. Ten years from now, if you're saying it, welcome. we're still here. Welcome to the Velveteen Lounge Kitchen. You're always welcome. You are always welcome at the Velveteen Lounge Kitchen. So anyway, this evening we decided that we would do some beer cocktails because uh -huh. we happen to have a fabulous beer store in our town. Actually very beer good. Beer King. He's the the king, king of, of bears. bears. Not not that kind of king of bears. He's not the Budweiser king of bears. No, he's the he's king the, of bears. He's the king of all bears. The not, real, real not, king of bears. Not just Budweiser. The real master of brew. <laughs> he's, the, the, oh, is that Laurie's? I recognize her picture. Yep, Hello! Thank even, you for joining even us. Even from a uh, you know, long... Thank you for joining us. Um, we were just saying that we, um, we have a wonderful beer store in our town, which has all kinds of interesting oddities that you can just buy one of and I couldn't help since we happen to love the movie Rosemary's Baby and just recently did the Rosemary's Baby episode there was one called Rhodes Mary's Baby which sounded perfect for Halloween mm -hmm. and it's from uh, Two Roads Brewery which happens to be somewhere in Connecticut um, Stratford you say? Stratford Connecticut yep, that's not far. Um, our neighboring state so without further ado, I'm going to pop this. I have to say in advance, it's a pumpkin spice, which I normally hate, but it's Rosemary's baby. So, well, you know, when and beer, this is the opener I don't know how to use. So when when use Beer Bros actually tunes in, they can note that they've just done at least three pumpkin beers, of which I believe Harvey like didn't like any of them. Oh. So, I, you know, that's because he I wants know. pumpkin beers. I, I'm not, I want to love it. I love pumpkin, pumpkin pie. Is heaven to me. I, I want to love pumpkin so much, but pumpkin ales just don't normally do it for me. But it's Rosemary's Baby, so I am I haven't tried this yet, but I am going into this wanting to love it because it's Rosemary's Baby. So let's. Oh uh, yes, yeah, so uh, Louise says it's like time travel. Yeah. Yes. Oh hello, Christian. Hello. hello. Hey Mike. Uh, who says Rosemary's Blobby? Ah, uh, yeah, there we go. Reference. You know, it's still. It's still a, um, a pumpkin ale. And Julie says hi. Is, oh, hi. Thank you for joining us. Um, it's okay. Let's give that it's a still not my favorite style of beer. So we'll, but, um, we'll do a beer rose and you want to sniff. But, um, yeah, it's got a nice ale thing and there's something yeah. spicy going on. If someone served me this in a pub, I would happily drink it. You know, a lot of these pumpkin beers, mm -hmm. quote unquote, just have some sort of pumpkin pie spice added. And I think, oh. And I love pumpkin pie, but. I just, I don't want like that much nutmeg happening in my beer. In, yeah. You know, and, but some of them actually will brew with in the pumpkin. In my eggnog, for sure. But the pumpkin itself is part of what's fermenting and it adds a vegetal <laughs> or fruity taste to it. And I think that's what they've done here. I could be wrong, but like it has more complex flavor and I think it's all right. For and a, more to the point, you don't have to sit there drinking it alone because we're here to mix cocktails. That's right. <laughs> so, I'm going to turn it into a cocktail. And I actually mm. think it will be delightful in a cocktail. No, no. You know, I'm going to have another sip it, for a pumpkin spice ale. Not bad. And by the way, we're playing our uh, copyright free music. <laughs> Not actually copyright free. I recognize this song. <laughs> we need to quit tempting fate. No, I know. But you know, if, if, <laughs> if YouTube, which is demonetizing everything these days, decides that they're going to like actually listen to our music, they'll say, oh, that's all copyright <sighs> stuff. This I feel like it's dangerous obscure. to say this on YouTube, but they're demonetizing, not just our videos, they're demonetizing. Everybody. I mean, ours have cocktails, which last time I checked, liquor was legal. Since about 1930, yeah. what, three? Yep, 1933. Yeah, yeah, only since then. But, um, but, you know, whatever. But I mean, the things that they're demonetizing are just crazy. Like oh. Everybody. Okay. Patrick's getting strikes. Larissa getting not, strikes. Not suitable for advertisers. It's like, well, what, what is? is suitable Larissa gets a strike when she uses cheese. You know, this is a real problem. No, that wasn't Larissa. Oh, that wasn't? I'm sorry. No, that wasn't like. She will, though. Don't you know? say that. Don't don't tempt fate for Larissa. She'll get a strike. Everyone's getting strikes. She uses ketchup. I got a strike. Sorry, Larissa. Pulse. Hey. Pulse. Cursing you. I'm anyway. not cursing anybody. Anyway. I'm just telling you like it anyway. is. 
It's time to. It's time to, it's make, time to make a, mix. It's time to make a cocktail with this. Um, I'm thinking. Yes. With this pumpkin spice. It doesn't say. Is it an ale? It doesn't. It doesn't actually say what style of beer it is. Just a minute. It says pumpkin spice. In the extremely fine print, which I'm going to read, which I, I take can't my read glasses either. off. It says it's an ale. Oh, okay. So it's it is ale. a pumpkin spice ale. I am going to use bourbon. Oh, that's a good idea. And I am going to use Bootlegger 21 bourbon. Well, hello. From our friends at Prohibition Distillery. Mm -hmm. It's, I hope it was a reverse curse. Like, I hope that you just keep doing what you're doing and nobody bothers because you do food. So I... What's to offend? I, Seriously. You know, you, you no controversial content at all. I am using okay. two ounces of bourbon. The particular That's bourbon I'm using is Bootlegger 21 from Prohibition Distillery here in New York. Which is coming in at about 92 proof, I think? Yeah. Yep. Ooh, so it's got a bit of a happens. kick to begin and with. And I'm going to use some... Fresh lemon juice. I'm missing all the fun. Yeah. I'm working. Paul's hey, having all the fun. I'm doing what's what. Let's see. You know, see Julie says, happens. don't don't jinx us. Hey. That's what I said. Don't jinx I'm them. I'm just <laughs> saying it as it is. I'm not telling don't anybody to do them. anything. The fact is they're nailing everybody, so. So, so far I've got two ounces of bourbon, half ounce of fresh lime juice. It's good so far. And I'm thinking, is that grenadine? That is grenadine. I don't think I want grenadine. Okay. Um, then don't use it. You good, I don't know if this is going to change the flavor too much. I'm thinking that the spice pear liqueur. Oh. I'm just kind of looking around me to see what's close, but also what I haven't used for a while. And I haven't. Spice pear tends to be a winter, it's a fall, fall thing. and winter thing. Yep. So. Um, and we're just about to hit that. They, let's see. Let's you know, use Temperature half today was a bit on the warm side. It's warm. Too. Very nice. And Not that, that I got out of the house. That will, of course, decrease. So, so, so far I've used two ounces of bourbon, a half ounce of fresh lime juice, and a half ounce of spice pear liqueur. This one is from St. George, which is in the Bay Area. Mm. And, um, let's see. We're gonna... Oh, we didn't see, ice we got... our tins. Oh my. Well, we have ice. Look at this, the ice is sticking to the Yeah, scoop. it happens. <laughs> wow, it is really stuck to the scoop too. Okay. Ah, that's not coming off. Anyway. As long as you have to deal. <laughs> as my hairdresser Marisa would say, the struggle is real. You know. Right, so we're gonna shake true. this with ice. And strain it into our cocktail glass, which at least we put our cocktail glasses aside. Yeah, those are there. Thank and, you. oh, I need to strain it. Here we go. Strain that into my cocktail glass. And I'm just going to add a splash of my pumpkin spice ale. A suggestion for black pepper bitters. Oh, Ooh. we don't have that. I like that I don't idea. know who makes that. Mm. That's a fun idea. Yeah. A little black pepper extra. Ooh, that's really good. Yeah. Mm. Try that. Yeah. So we got two ounces of the bourbon I'm as well. Fan. Yep, two ounces of bourbon, half ounce fresh lime juice, half ounce spice pear liqueur. I used St. George's from the Bay Area. Mm -hmm. And I topped it with the Rhodes oh, Mary's baby. baby pumpkin spice ale. Mm -hmm. If you can't get that, Imagine you could use another pumpkin spice ale. Sorry, Rosemary's That's, Baby, but it's true. I mean, it's it's two spice items working yeah. together, and they, they work together it's, well. I yes, think. it tastes like fall. How nice! It what tastes a good like thing. fall. It does. It, go. This would be good for Thanksgiving. And the thing is that I'm getting out of this. The flavors of all are coming through. Like the mm -hmm. base spirit, I can say, yeah, that's that is actually a craft distillery. I've recognized that as a craft whiskey. Mm -hmm. That's really nice. Oh, yeah, it's just, good. And the fact that it's about, what, 8% uh, higher proof than usual, it's like it's got a little more kick. If you're in the Catskills in. area, stop in to Prohibition Distillery Please. and their tasting room. It's, they're such nice people and it's just, it's great. Very accommodating. <laughs> it's just a really, you taste it's a great everything, stop. you can take a tour, 
Oh, it's just fantastic. And Roscoe, New York, for being this tiny little town, it has a brewery, it has a distillery, it has, um, it's just, it's a great place, you know? <laughs> it's small, but it's mighty. So. They just, they have stuff. They and do. if you decided to like, you know, I just feel like fly fishing, this is the fly fishing the fly capital fishing of the capital. world. <laughs> yeah. You know, some people, they find it so relaxing. I think, go to town. That's what, that's what I, I've never found myself saying, I just feel like fly fishing, but. A grind of black pepper on top. Well, that, I will keep in mind. <gasps> well, we could do that right now. Oh, and Mike says, just avoid hitting goats in the road. Yeah! <laughs> That's because goats do roam. That's that wine, goats do roam. Into the road in front of our car. There's a longer story behind that, folks. So what we have here is something I picked up at the same time as the rosemary. We should rosemaries. do the black pepper idea, though. Well, I'll consider it. Because I'm working with this stuff, this mango mosaic, which is coming to us from Breckenridge Brewery, Colorado. Mm -hmm. Hello. All right. Okay, so this is, let me see if it says anything about itself. Five and a half percent, that's actually pretty reasonable for a beer like this. And let's get that guy I have off a there. little extra. I'm just gonna. Well, extra is good. Pour into you know? my. And then, since I don't want the balance to be off, it's a teeny little splash of my pumpkin ale. Look at that. So, now this is described as tropical flavors paired with exotic hops. Well, we'll see how hoppy this is, and we'll see how exotic, exotic the flavors hops? are. Exotic hops? That's actually got a really interesting nose. Get that. Do nose. they specify exotic hops? Like, what does that yeah, mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That could be some pretty unusual hops. There are all sorts of hops it in the world. Smells good. Yeah, it does smell good. What do we got there? It's good. I'm not getting the fruitiness, which to me is a good yeah, thing. Yeah, you would call I'm, it a good I'm thing. Not a, I'm not a fruity beer it's fan. It's not really fruit forward. So if they have apricot in here, I think you have yeah. to actually savor this for a while for that to come out. Mango. Oh, mango. It's advertising oh, itself as mango. Mango. Oh, sorry. But yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm pleased mango, to say I'm not, I'm not getting the mango. The mango <laughs> is not heavy. Like not heavy. Now, I have no problem with mango, and if you had a beer with that was, where that was a lot more forward, that could be perfectly fine. A lot of the Belgian ales that you try with the fruit styles are a little heavier on the fruit, although they uh, all, they're always balanced. That's a style of beer that is well worth looking into, like a, uh, like a wheat beer, a Saison, any of like the the wild fermented beers hey sour ales big fun oh cooking with a little spice hello hey thank there. you for joining us i just got the mango paul needs a new church key i can i can get it open i can <laughs> sometimes this thing is like one stop and sometimes it's kind of tough oh larissa says she likes our tasting glasses are they from nola yes they're from tales of the cocktail hello. they are from <laughs> they're nola. branded tales of the cocktail glasses that we got for showing up they're terrific yeah Thank you. Anyway. I'm going to try some more of this just because I'm still trying the beer. <laughs> I better try this again to see whether or not I still Let me try like this it. one. Would you like to try this one more time? I'll, I'll try it a little more while you go change the record. It's these old records, they, oh. um, they're they extremely short. Ten minutes aside. <laughs> ten, that was ten minutes? Yeesh. That felt like about seven. Fourteen anyway. Anyway. Um, yeah, they're all, I don't know if you can see it. It's all... Tales of the cocktail glasses. Um, you show up to things. We came back from Tales of the Cocktail with so much glassware. I'm amazed none of it broke. I'm not joking. I mean, like some of these were shot glasses, but we came back with like 20 glasses. <laughs> and of course, in the moment, you're like, "Yes, give me all the glasses." And then you get home, and you're like, "What am I gonna wow. do with all these glasses?" Brands are promoting as they are. I just had a really do. good idea. That's we the should, idea. We should have a giveaway. Glassware? We should have a glassware giveaway. We have some spares. Could be done. Some spares. Some spares. No, we no. have so many spares. Let's see here. What do I, I have to play with here? This idea. The glassware giveaway. Look for look for it. Look for it on our social media. The glassware giveaway. I'm still thinking here. I have a good idea. Yeah. But it's your cocktail. Yeah, so you better let me go with it because we might do more. <laughs> I think I'm going to go good idea. with the Don Q. Also, sponsored liquor. That is a liquor. good idea. Yep. Don Q Gold, excellent rum, nice flavor. There's also Don Q Añejo. It's been resting longer. It's got some fantastic bouquet. Larry says, woohoo! 
I know, we need to do a glassware giveaway. Our last giveaway, which was for our drink container, um, the company that provided it to us actually um, m and the, they handled everything. So I um, need to figure out how to actually do a giveaway. But yes, we have, I feel like we could put together a prize pack of shot glasses because we have so many. There are some things that could be done. Yes, so anyway, look for it. Oh, comments are coming in. So let's see here. Which bitters did you use? I did not use bitters. Okay. I'm trying to remember what I did now since I had to put this cocktail no. below. Change your mind. <laughs> And let's see. Oh boy. Well, see, you can see that we genuinely did not plan this ahead of time. I'm actually going to try some of the Barrows Intense, which we're still using, and we're getting a lot of Barrows Intense. Still love this stuff. It's really fantastic. Oh my gosh, for ginger. If you're looking for a ginger liqueur, this is just I don't think straight up ginger. Anything in the market right now has the kind of hit that this does. And it is, you've seen the way it's made in our episode. It is all fresh it ingredients. It is just straight up ginger. They cut it, they infuse it, they like cut it down to size. Wow, it's just fantastic. Nothing else added, just ginger and Ginger, pooch, sugar. sugar. Yeah. That's it. That's yeah. it. So good. So simple, mm -hmm. so good. You think to yourself, yeah, I could do that. Yeah, we'll just try. You know? <laughs> Seriously, you know? You let, know, sometimes you just want to park it and not DIY. Let them do it. They're good. Yeah, Julie says we did the same thing with place settings for photography. Yep. Yep. <laughs> give them away. Get it out of here. All right, so I'm going to throw in a little sour here just to get this thing sour. And uh, we got the lime juice, about a half ounce. Okay. And I think that I will add a couple of dashes of Ancient Chinese Secret. Ah. Dash Fire does it again. I really love this stuff. It's, it's a five spice bitter and some other stuff in it. Nice aroma. Another thing we discovered at Tales of the Cocktail. It, it has this amazing tendency to look like a perfume bottle. Well, which I love. It's you know, pretty. It's, it's a great, it's a pretty little thing. And speaking of prettiness behind the bar. Yes. Paul put a light into our new bar unit today. Can you even see so, this? I don't know. No, they can't. We're gonna have to take the phone off. Oh, there you go. See things lit up. Can you see that? Look at that. Something lit up. Wow, how did that light up? Let's see. I don't think you can really see it. Oh yeah, it's, it's reflecting the glass. It's hard to say. But, we're, um, we're gonna have to check that out later. But, I know, you have to take the phone off of the tripod because... But you can actually see inside here now, which is... This, this is what passes for excitement Very good for finding kitchen. things. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so we can actually see inside of our bar unit now. What a concept. Very, very exciting. All right, so once again, to recap, I got two ounces worth of the Don Q gold, is it? Yeah, don't you go. Nice as I can see the light. Half ounce worth of the lime juice and half ounce of the Barrow's Intention ginger liqueur. Oh, Larissa. We're going to put that in. How is the new bar piece working out for you? I've gotten used to your new background. Thank you. I love it. I feel like this is the best $40 we've ever spent. We paid $40 for it. For the price, it is, it is impossible to beat that in furniture. It's really solidly built. I, you know, I really wanted this something. This is like really heavy wood. I wanted something back there, and I thought eventually we would go to Ikea or something like that. Yep. And I, no shade on Ikea, I love Ikea, yep. but this was $40 and it's vintage and it's in good shape. It's so. really <laughs> a pretty cool piece. Yeah. You know? We're going to be it's making kind of better use of the glassware section of it a little later. Yeah. It's a little noisy right now, but you know. So let's shake that up. By noisy, he means. You gotta open it up, and it sounds like a rhinoceros is dying. Something like that. <laughs> you open it up, it's like. Wow. But um, that will be fixed. Yeah, by me. Ooh, look at that show tending, and it's splashing everywhere. Now that's a little full. You didn't so, leave room for the beer. So I'm gonna have to drain a little bit of that. <laughs> That's a really nice flavor so far. So let's actually chopper that with something that has some hoppiness and a little bit of the mango. I think this beer is actually the exciting discovery of the evening. I love this one because it's Rhodes Mary's Baby. And if you like it's pumpkin spice ales, it's one, of Honestly, the, it's one of the really good ones. 
that doesn't have a really fakey flavor like some of them have. It, yeah. It's like they just it's, put some real spices it's, it's in, they put one. some pumpkin but in. But this one, this, mo this mango mosaic, it's good because I'm not a fan of fruit beers and I like it. So let's see. Yeah, the, the base flavor on that is really good. Oh, that's really good. Hello. Mmm. We basically just made a nice sour, topped it with the beer that has some flavors added to it. Everything's balanced well, and it all plays well together. That's how to do it. Tastes like something you would get at Lou maybe. I think Lou should serve this. Let's see. It's really good. I like that a lot. Isn't that good? In fact, this could even withstand a little bit more of the beer. No. Maybe it's just because I sometimes get the Sharkarita at Lou What is the Sharkarita? It's a margarita with a land shark lager. Upended into Toss it. Tossed into it like they do. Yeah. Like they do. Which is, I'm sure the Tales of the Cocktail people would disown me for saying that. Oh, wait, I said that on live video. Oops. <laughs> if you're on the beach in Cancun and they serve you one, you'd say, <laughs> You know, thank you. May I have another? Don't unleash the floodgates of me talking about pretentiousness and cocktails. I Cross love, it. love, love a cocktail with wonderful spirits like Prohibition Distillery or Death's Door or Don Q. Black Dirt or Don Q. Neptune? Neptune. Oh, is Neptune is here. in next yes. Tuesday's happy hour. So in fact, Richard from Neptune. Hello. That will be in next Thursday. Sorry. Thursday's happy hour. Um, but you know, sometimes you just have to relax and have a little bit of fun. Oh, brother. People are asking me to do, do some Tom Cruise cocktail action. <laughs> <sighs> I don't choke okay. like that, folks. If you want to see a mess, I'm not going to do it. No. I have tried. I have tried to juggle, and I can't. Oh, uh, I've seen show tenders do it live in competition, and they just they fluffed like terrible. No, I've <laughs> tried. I honestly, stuff. I mean, cause I went to acting school. I spent two years, like eighty hours a week, in acting school, and of course, you try to juggle because everyone there is a complete nerd. But I can't juggle. I don't have that kind of coordination. I can dance. I was I awesome in dance class, but I can't juggle. If you want to see do, liquor like everywhere, which I feel like some sadistic people probably do want to see liquor everywhere, but... Is this dry? I can't see it. You keep taking it away. Yeah, it's dry. I can what probably do, do like one juggle. I can, I can like probably catch I can, this. I can do one thing at a time. There we go. Whoop. I can do, like, here, let me... I yeah. can do like try, one. Try that out. I can do like... Uh, yeah. This is not impressing <laughs> anybody. David Copperfield is watching this saying, wow, you guys are lame. <laughs> David Copperfield is like face palming. I cannot anyway. believe that I'm watching uh, yeah, this. Here. Um, Seriously. I have I don't have that kind of um, coordination. I don't know. I, and I feel like to... our entire bar is going to end up sticky and disgusting. We have other priorities here, folks. But if you really want me to work up the show tending. But... It was, I don't think I've... No, I shared this on our blog. It's, it hasn't been in an episode yet, but it will be. Hidden Harbor, the Tiki Bar in Pittsburgh, their ladies' room has a cocktail theme, and by cocktail, I mean cocktail. Cocktail. Tom Cruise movie. No. So, um, yeah, that's kind of awesome. Are we going to see that come cocktail time? Well, yeah, but I also shared a picture of it on. Oh, the rather come episode time. Yeah. That's because we shot it at Hidden Harbor. Hidden Harbor actually gave us three cocktails. <laughs> I know that episode is going to have three cocktails. Three it's... classics. They were very generous and they shared them and you're going to see them and they are intense. It is a fantastic place. And their their ladies room is cocktail. And it's cocktail. The Tom Cruise I movie thing. I haven't seen anything awesome. much like that since California with Azteca. With oh my restaurant. gosh. Oh wow. Go back, it was what, summer of June of 2016. 2016. Um, we shot an episode at Azteca in Garden Grove, California, and wow. their ladies' room. Just I just watch it. Just just go back and watch it. I'm not going to say anything. <laughs> just go and see it. It's it's to be what it, the, the proprietor said you have to come in here. I'm I like, think, I can't go into the ladies' room, but we did, and we, we filmed it. it was I, incredible. I feel like a lot of restaurants and bars, like, they really let their creativity fly in the restrooms. 
Look, as far as it, decor goes, I mean. Well, it's a place where people go to do one thing. But the ladies do two things. But you know, well, I, you I, part I, of the I nose. some people think they have to keep like a certain theme in oh, yeah. the dining room and the bar and whatever. But in the restroom, it's like whatever. So that's where the creativity kind of happens. Uh, well, many restrooms and establishments get neglected and they, they look really horrible. And you go, wow, this place is a dump. Many actually <laughs> do something in there and they say, look, you know, we're going to keep this place looking clean and nice and funny. And hey, you know. And they are funny. They're funny. But so. um, but anyway. So. I feel like our, our powder room here at the Velveteen Lounge Kitchen is Liberace themed. It is. And um. And come Christmas time, it is Liberace themed Christmas Liberace, which is highly appropriate. And it's about to become more Liberace themed. Oh boy. I'll leave that to your imagination. Oh. But, um, yeah. Anyway. I we should make more. I'm having a good time. It's so sure. early. This is so early for us, but we thought... Strangely early. It's 6.30. We thought maybe Eastern we should time. try to be a little earlier this yes. week. And I thank you to all the people who are tuning in from other yes. time zones. I know. It's, it's much a little earlier for early you either. for other time zones, but... It's slightly early for the East Coast, but uh, we'll see what's what. Anyway. Hey, maybe I should reply. And, uh, you know, oh, uh, Julie says, your episodes from your trip have been so cool. Thank you. Thank you. We've been to, you know, you've been posting the blogs. We've been posting some episodes. Yeah, and bit we've by done bit they're coming two out. out of six. Three of them are tiki bars, so they will be after Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. Thanksgiving. Halloween. Halloween. Mm. Halloween, not Thanksgiving. We're still in October. They'll be after Halloween. But they were awesome. All three of them were just amazing in their own way. And then A Christmas Story. That will be our first episode after... <laughs> that will be our first episode after Thanksgiving. But, um, you know, it's Christmas. We've got to save that for Christmas. And But I have to say that A Christmas Story... So I saw someone on Facebook post that they were taking their mother to A Christmas Story house. And they were kind of asking for comments like, well, how will it be or what should we do? And I have to say, shooting an episode at a Christmas Story house was honestly one of the best experiences I've ever had doing this show. They were so wonderful. Everyone there was great. Fantastic tour. It was... Seriously. Just, it was one of those experiences that... Now, I'm a Christmas Story geek. When they show it for 24 hours on Christmas Eve, I could watch it for 24 hours. It's awesome. I love that movie. We see some, we see some but, episodes. So. <laughs> and we and we own the DVD, but of course, it was. It's one of those things right. where if you just if you love that movie, going to that house is just. It's one of those experiences that you will never forget. Um, it's interactive. When you go into the house, you're allowed to touch everything. If you go in the kitchen, you can sit at the table. You can open their bar set, which is on top of the radio, and like, oh, they mixed cocktails with this. Or you can open their bread box. You can sit under the sink where Randy sat when he thought Daddy was going to kill Ralphie. You can hold up a bar of Life Boy soap and pretend taste it. I mean, it's just... If, you know, if you were into that movie, it's just really like, it's Mecca. It really is Mecca if you're into that movie. And and then there's the museum across the street, which has the costumes and effects from the movie. And then there's the gift shop, which if you're like me, you could drop a significant amount of money at that gift shop. So honestly, it's so inexpensive and Cleveland is great. I've seen people diss Cleveland online and I really do not understand that at all. Like Porco, which we shot an episode there, Fantastic. is great. Um, Tiki Underground, which is in nearby Akron, amazing. And there's vintage shopping. Everyone tells me about, was it Flower Child? Is that the name of the store? We didn't get to that one, but we got to Sweet Lorraine, which is another yeah. vintage store that is legendary. And 
it just, I don't know, Cleveland rocks. Buckland Gallery of Witchcraft and Magic. Cleveland does rock. There's so much to do in Cleveland. We didn't, I, I've been to Cleveland twice now, once on tour in a show, and this past time, and I still have never made it to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, and I don't care because Cleveland rocks. Cleveland is amazing. So um, go to Cleveland. That's my travel tip for the day. Even without the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, Cleveland rocks? It does, and I, um, yeah. Well, how about that? <laughs> so anyway, that's my, that's my advice about Cleveland. Just go. Well, if you ever watched the show Hot in Cleveland, which was one of my favorites until it got canceled, but um, I don't know if anyone's actually still watching. I kind of went off on a rant there. We have um, comments. All right, Polly, you gotta take this from me. All right, back to business. If anyone's oh still watching, cocktail time. Oh, we have a request for cocktails with Ovaltine. We made one with Ovaltine. We at made one with the house. Ovaltine in the house. They let us use the kitchen their stuff. So <laughs> they let us make a cocktail in their kitchen with stuff from the house. So again, one of the best days of my life so far. Did I just light. catch my toe on the light stand cord? No, I actually kicked myself on the light <laughs> stand itself. Like bang into the steel of the light stand. I didn't scream, but you know, the pain was still there. Should I mention the stickiness I'm feeling? No, and uh, Larissa <laughs> and, and Julia are still here and so is Mike. So hey, if, well, we, if we have three of, my three favorite of people, you. Three of my favorite people. And I'm, not, right I'm, not, I'm not lying, three of my favorite people. Yeah, seriously. All right. Do something mm. with good old dark Jamaican rum. Oh, hello. You can't go wrong. Let's see. Two ounces because, you know, what the heck. Two ounce pour is your standard pour. Oops. Yeah, two, two and a quarter ounces. Nobody can see that. Yeah, I don't think we use this yet. The cardamom bitters. Oh. The Fee Brothers. Fee Brothers, which are quite easy to find. If you can't find them, they're on our store. But honestly, cardamom bitters are kind of easy to find. Here's a few dashes of rose. And the fresh lime juice. Let's use a half ounce of that. And... Oh, do I want to add anything else to this? I've got to empty my glass. If you have enough material. Well, so far it's just the bitters, the rum, and oh, the cardamom bitters. Um, you know what? No, I'm done. Bitters are online. That's it. I'm tired of these cocktails that are designed to disguise the flavor of the booze. It's a very prohibition thing. It is. When the booze was bad, you disguised it. And if it would blind you, well... Uh, yeah. Not so cool. So this was just two ounces of dark Jamaican rum, half ounce of fresh lime juice, and three dashes of cardamom bitters from Fee Brothers. Shake it with some ice. Strain it into our cocktail glass. And. Rum. I'm trying to decide which beer I want to top it with. The two choices? I think I'm going to use yours. Oh, I think I'm going to use the well. mango mosaic. That was actually. I liked that one. So, here we go. I made the right choice. Try that. It's good. Yeah, I'd be happy with that. It's so funny. I listen to this record and it's a dance class record. It feels like dun dun 
that, 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 the beat is so pronounced on this record. It's like all I can do. Trying to help you actually do a little cha-cha-cha. <laughs> Wallet and cardamom. Oh, Wallet <gasps> bitters. Oh, really? We have both. Hmm. Let's see. Tuesday's episode features the walnut liqueur. Right, you're on Polly, walnut liqueur and cardamom bitters. Or walnut uh, infusion. Walnut as in infusion? Boy Drinks World. Oh, that's true too. Yes. We do have that. We have options with walnut. Mm. Oh, let's see here. We'll use some rum. And I have, like, you use this guy. Maybe I'll use your beer here, the pumpkin. There we go. Take pumpkin and nut will definitely play well together. Maybe I'll do something interesting. Tastes like Thanksgiving. That's why I said Thanksgiving earlier. It's true. <laughs> mm. <laughs> could you give me some ice, please? Of course I could. That's good. You sure? That's not? Yep. It's probably any ice. Plenty of ice. Alright. Now, base liquor. I love these live episodes. They're, They're a lot so of fun. fun. We're like about 35 minutes in. We've made two drinks. <laughs> it's good. Our audience is having a good time. We're having a good time. I wish I could just send these to you because. I you know. know. Let's see what would do well <laughs> with this business that we've got here. So far it's just ice. I know. <laughs> and currently, if I were to examine this glass, I'd say it's a fine vintage device. The world device. is your oyster. But no, no, no. not going to do too much. We need to put something in there. And what's going to play well with a pumpkin beer? I know. Oh, my favorite. South of the border. Oh, you gotta give me the phone. Copyright strike. Copyright strike. I can't even get upset about the copyright thing anymore. I'm going to give us about two ounces of tequila. Oh, Patrick's here. Hi, Patrick. Hey. Yes, sir. Um, Hello, sir. It's in, it's in fall cocktails. Tequila always sounds like a fall thing. I don't know why. It's because it has a certain savoriness to it. See, I feel like tequila, just because of Jimmy Buffett, sounds like a beach thing, but... Nothing against Jimmy Buffett. Oh, no. I hear people dissing Jimmy Buffett online, and I just think, you know what? He's, at the very least, a millionaire, if not a billionaire. So I think, you know what? You, you go, Jimmy Buffett. Apparently, Jimmy hangs out with Warren Buffett, an actual billionaire. The so, if he's not a billionaire, he hangs out with billionaires. So, there you go. Oh, look. You gotta read this for me, though. Oh. Having a bad day. Oh, no. good. Bitten. I traveled recently. Calling Stormator to make sure the hotel don't have bed bugs. Oh! Oh man. my god! Oh, that's terrible. You know what kills bed bugs? Liquor. Oh my god, I'm so sorry. That's the kind of thing that haunts me because we live in New York. And even though we don't live in New York City, you hear about these things happening on trains and all train commutes every day. So that sucks. A friend of ours had bed bugs and bad not news. cool. So you have my bad news. total sympathy. I am building this in the glass. This is a double old fashioned. I got two ounces of tequila and some ice, and I've got the red Ancho Reyes liquor. And so far, so good. Yep, and I'm going to give us about a half ounce. That was a half ounce, and I got a half ounce of lime. But bed bugs, oh, man. Uh, no good. Not cool. Well, I think that people who don't live in cities don't understand bed bugs, and they think they're like, oh, you're gross and disgusting if you have bed bugs. And I'm like, no, no, seriously. Like, it's just one of those horrible things that happens. 
I am going to plug Boy Drinks Rolled Strong Cocktail Spice. Because I want to put a little more heat in here. Oh my god, I am so sorry. I'm so sorry about the bed. Oh, jeez. That, no, that's terrible. It's... That sucks. That just sucks. Combine that a bit. I'm going to top with... A, I'm actually going to try this first. You're going to pour the beer in before you pour it? Heavy pour. Oh, you're building it in the glass. Yes, That's building right. glass. Said you did say that. Probably about a three ounce pour. You did say that. And look, our three minute record ended again. <laughs> Let's flip it. I call this record no copyright strike. Yeah, so far. Oh, that's good. That's really good. I kind of love this, actually. Well, interesting. I could reproduce that. Well, thank heavens, but... Isn't it good? Mm-hmm. That's really good. You made two really good ones the same thing. As did you. Oh, yeah. My, I didn't remember what I did. <laughs> <laughs> you look at the episode. <laughs> we'll tell you everything. What did I even do? What did I do? So, And we still have Rosemary's baby left. <laughs> Rosemary's, yes. The first one had Prohibition and um, Prohibition Distillery, mm -hmm. Bootlegger 21 Bourbon. I know, just like whatever. It's been a so, long day. We shot three episodes today? We did. We shot three episodes. And we're coming up with the, the rest of this business. Where's my phone? It's right here. No. Oh, okay. They're good. I gotta say, all of them are good, but... <laughs> Larissa says, everyone, everyone gets smashed in sympathy. Didn't mean to bring the room down. Oh, hey. Oh, no. Okay. No, no, no. Hey, not, no. Not at all. No. Not at all. Not at all. No worries that it was I feel like I need to go watch some episodes of the Golden Girls. <laughs> Perhaps. Am I right? Anyone here watch a Golden Girls? If you talk about Florida or Cleveland? <laughs> hmm. I love Golden Girls. I feel like we need to do a Golden Girls episode, but it's just one of those, you know, like, I, some of the ideas I have that I would love to do for this show, and I think, like, oh, and they just date us, and no one will watch it, and at the same time, I'm like, no one's watching it anyway, so who cares? Like, <laughs> Let it rip. We're just saying. I just want to do a Golden Girls episode. A Golden Girls Christmas. I just watched a Golden Girls Christmas episode last night, and I have laughed so hard at that. So, well, uh, Reese notes that they're already drinking. So good. Amen. Yeah, all of you should be because you're watching us. Amen. If you need inspiration, we're doing it right here. If you don't, then you're good. Well. And YouTube is going to demonetize this, so here's to you, so screw YouTube. It. Demonetize. There you go. Two cocktails in. And I like that demonetize has the word demon in it. Oh. Have you thought about well, that? Well, it's Halloween season, isn't it? Hello. Demonetize has demon? demon in it. Well. Is that about it? Yes. Okay, folks. I suppose I should eat. Yeah. Sooner or later, that's a good idea. <laughs> so, anyway. And thank you all for joining us. Yes, absolutely. Have a fabulous weekend. Um, follow your favorite YouTube producers. I would say Zing Cat, Larissa's Kitchen, uh, A Little Spice, Cooking with a Little Spice. Um, you know can I say we're all out here trying to do this <laughs> every day we're hustling that's right but in the meantime have a fabulous Halloween season and we will be back next week with something else anyway. we'll see you in no time with big that's fun right. and Monday will be a mocktail Monday that's autumn themed and Tuesday will be another low-budget horror movie classic 
Oh, which we specialize in. So. Well, you know, it's true. <laughs> anyway, we will see you later. Bye.